Palestinian the large city of Zimbabwe here I have uh, Umlungisi who is the candidate for ZANU PF uh, Bulawai Central and he has just voted to uh, come in and vote in the power the process. Uh, the process is uh, good morning viewers. The process is very smooth. I think on average I took about uh, less than five minutes from the checking to the issuing of uh, ballot papers and to the voting. So people should come out in their numbers, exercise their constitutional right. As we move towards uh, the Second Republic, this watershed election must be a hallmark of freedom in Zimbabwe. I'm sure I'm seeing cues here, a sign that people are excited, a sign that people are galvanized. They want to endorse their leader, they want to choose their leaders. It's, it's uh, actually very exciting when people turn out. In the urban centers, you know, people hardly uh, partake in these plebiscites. If it was the rural constituents, I'm sure the queues would uh, uh, grow longer as the day goes by. Uh, but uh, what I'm seeing here is very encouraging. Yeah, this is not the first time when I will contest. You know, yes. you've, you've done it before and uh, you've not changed your heart. You've, you've always contested that as NPF. So this time around, what do you think you've changed? From we were coming from a government of national unity and it was not very clear uh, what the party had to offer because every, everything was overshadowed by the GNU. But this time around we got a fresh mandate in 2018 which uh, uh, we managed until 2017 when things were spiraling downwards and thanks to the intervention of the citizens of Zimbabwe uh, we, had, we saw the birth of a second republic which we want to endorse now in November 2017. What makes me confident that the party will win now is it has rebranded. The party now has, new, has a new president, it has new leadership, it's promoting the intergenerational consensus. The party now is, it has liberalized, they've taken enough space in the print media, social media. Uh, that to me is the birth of a democratic Zimbabwe. It's unlike before in the old order, those things were never seen. They're taking Zimbabwe back to the family of nations also. It's something that, in my view, endears well with the people of Zimbabwe, the, Zim the citizens of Zimbabwe, because people want to see a better Zimbabwe. Where we were before, uh, the previous president was uh, much concerned about uh, consolidation of power. That's why Zimbabwe was a paria state, it was an isolated state. Now, the current president has taken it back to the people, the owners of the country. And now, uh, even the re-engagement and engagement with uh, our friends and those that were made force, it puts Zimbabwe in a better state. And he's promising things that can be delivered. You have seen even in the constituency, we had uh, vulnerable groups. A clear-cut example is the Kabacha community, where we spoke to the first lady and we got a donation of the Pogo. So the, the current president now is a people-centered president. His policies, his ambitions, his goals, they speak directly to the needs of the people. So in that manner, I believe uh, we will get a resounding support from the electorate. We will get a resounding endorsement from the electorate. Yeah, I, I know you're busy. You're supposed to go to different polling stations, but I've seen you. I mean, during the campaign, doing Amakar, Ali's, and uh, Do to Do, you were very busy. Oh yes, uh, you were yes. very busy everywhere. But what was the reception of the people? You know, compared to the last time, they were sitting about. At this time uh, around, I want to Batogo. They are excited. Um, the fact that now they have their freedom, which is what they have missed since 1980, that on its own was a source of excitement. Uh, it was when we did our door to door, the results were encouraging because people were forthcoming. It's unlike before, where they viewed ZANU-PF as a scary part. Now they are seeing a rebranded ZANU-PF that is people centered, that is people friendly, and that on its own, it rejuvenated their spirit in engagement in political issues. So you are confident that taking this time? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, all things being equal, I will be the right owner to come end of day to day.
Congratulations in advance. You thank you, you thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we, we know the one that we are talking to uh, about the elections and like we are saying we are going to be talking to different people throughout the day. Spoil to to come and the pan. With me there, there is a uh, uh, honourable uh, 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 learned lawyer, some call him Umas Visa. So call him in as well to try and, and, and find out uh, what's going on. Say. Uh, I was chatted about when I saw one of them, since we've started that, how is the situation, what's your, 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 your analysis? Uh, well, um, my first take is um, um, I'm quite impressed with the voter turnout. Um, as you can see here, the, the large city hall, uh, people have started queuing. I've had conversations with people in Harare, I've had conversations with people in Makwekwe, people in Victoria Falls. Uh, so I think the voter turnout, people are determined to, to vote. and. Uh, 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 protect their, their their rights. So, what are going to this election? I mean, it is, some people call it a contested election. Some people say it's a watershed election. Uh, some people call it, uh, you know, a walkover. How do you think? Uh, how do you think uh, these things are going to go? Um, I think it's a watershed election uh, in many regards. Uh, obviously, number one, uh, Mkabe is out of the picture. Uh, he has ruled this country for for for, for more than 35 years. Uh, Mok and Sangrai, unfortunately, it's also late. So for the first time, we're having a new major entrance in the form of ED and in the form of uh, Chamisa in the ballot box. Uh, Chamisa only has had a, a, a fine run for the past four or so months. Nangako also has been in the helm for about nine months uh, after taking over from Mugabe. So it's watershed in the sense that people have been given new choices that they've never had before. Yeah, we, we saw yesterday a press conference from Tarapana where mm. some people are saying he was actually endorsing uh, Chamisa and all those kind of things. Does that do a favor to the opposition or is actually uh, has a negative effect on people? I, I think it depends from, from which angle we are looking at the matter. Uh, um Mkabe has got a right to, to choose whoever he wants to support. Uh, we all know publicly that, uh, for example, Mnangakwa has been trying to court Mkabe to come to his corner. But the fact that uh, uh, Mkabe has not decided to come to his corner uh, it does not detract and take away Mkabe's right to choose who he wants to vote for. So it depends. And my view is um, as, as, as many days ago, as maybe a week or two weeks ago, people have already decided who they want to vote for. So Mkabe's uh, a choice of candidate or opinion on a candidate is more like an opinion than anything else. So I think it's a 50-50, it doesn't really change anything. It doesn't change the political matrix. But we have had people saying all along the opposition was fighting Mkabe. Mm -hmm. And for them to find themselves agreeing with him to the extent of voting with him mm -hmm. is, you know, mm -hmm. it's unthinkable. Well, it's just that it's about in politics is a funny politics. If you look at the politics of Kenya, look at the politics of Nigeria, this doesn't become an issue. Yeah. People who fought uh, uh, some years ago can still come into a coalition arrangement and, and move the country forward. So to me, it's just really a storm in a teacup or in a teaspoon. Uh, there's nothing to, to worry about. Mkabe has chosen sides. There's nothing much to talk about. I mean, let's talk about, again about the democracy. Clearly, it's, it's, it's unthinkable to say Mkabe after the coup surely should be seen to be supporting Zanpil. Clearly, would go to, he's a politician. He's entitled to that right. History and demographics, mm -hmm. I think, uh, favor Zanpil. In the sense that uh, you know, there are a lot of people in rural areas, mm -hmm. uh, they were about 3 point something million yeah, compared six. to 1.8 in, in urban areas. Mm -hmm. I mean, what is it that the opposition needs to do for them to tap this president? Because without tapping in that urban area, uh, I mean, that rural vote mm -hmm. will, will be where we were in 2020. My view is that this is a tight contest. The ZANU PF obviously have had, um, from what we have seen, um, it's a catch-22. ZANPF has made some inroads in some parts of Harare uh, for the urban vote. But equally, Chamisa has had uh, a fun run, I think 82 rallies in total, uh, including mostly rural areas. I think more than 50 of those rallies were in the rural areas. So it's really a, a tight contest. Um, and let's not ignore the Mkabe factor, like we have said, and also the split with the uh, NPF um, and, and, and other characters, Temba Mliswa, Kanda, Kundaya, and other characters and so on. So, and also the fear factor, in as much as it is still there, people are being intimidated and so on, uh, the fear factor now has been reduced. Uh, people are hoping for a change. We have not seen much progress under the Nangako government uh, for the past nine months. So, to me, yes, the, the rural vote is going to count, but it's not necessarily going to count for ZANPF.
Let's also look at the young ones. I mean, if you are looking at the 65% of people who have registered to vote are people who are between 18 and 40 years. These are people who are two years old, not born in 1980. Do you think the young vote is going to carry the day? Um, not necessarily. Um, I'm one person who's quite disappointed because I don't think that the young vote necessarily belongs to the MTC Alliance. Uh, I don't think that there's a serious campaign that was done to the young voters. We have seen a lot of um, uh, ZANU-PF uh, 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 members who are quite constituting the young vote from the Kweru meeting that they had, Harare meeting that they've had. So I think we still have got a split vote among, among young voters. So we can't really say that it's going to be a young vote that is going to align to MTC Alliance and necessarily Chamis. So it's still a split vote uh, for the young people. Bulawa has always been known to be the opposition stronghold. But there are some people who feel like this time around, Zanbi of my pick one or two seats in there. We have seen uh, a shift uh, from the politics of political parties. It's not a significant shift, uh, but um, it's notable that people are prepared to vote for candidates based on capacity. For example, we've seen the work that Modi is doing uh, in that constituency. So I think it's going to count. So yes, Bulawe has been an MTC a, a stronghold, but we'd like to see a shift because of the work that he has done in the community. Uh, we've also seen uh, capable leaders like uh, uh, Mlungis doing a lot of, of work, and we've seen even a surge uh, in Bulawe Central, about 20,000 or so voters and we can't really pick where these voters are coming from. So the point being, um, I think there's a lot that is happening uh, concerning the caliber and character of candidates that is going to count. And it may count in favor of certain um, uh, ZANU-PF supporters. And we've known traditional ZANU-PF doesn't have uh, split votes. But for example in Makwek we are looking at about 22 candidates and one ZANU candidate and in the last count election they had about 1.3. I don't think that they are going to lose that 1,300 votes, but the opposition, including the MTC, uh, ZAPU, and all the others, are going to be forced to split the, uh, the remainder of the votes. So uh, it may be a, a, a matter of some people winning by about 1,500 votes. So it's quite a, a, a close contest in Bulawayo. I foresee maybe one or two uh, candidates from ZANU uh, taking one or two seats or even one. Thank you very much for, for, for your honesty and, 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 and that kind of analysis. I think uh, at this point in the time, I would like to bring in uh, Uro Fire. He has been working with residents and uh, uh, he, 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 he understands the, the urban vote, I think, more than I do. Uh, good morning, Fire. But we are talking about the urban vote and uh, the voting patterns and how. Maybe to start with, I mean, you, you are working with residents. Do you think Fupe is going to be a factor? I, I, I think that, I honestly think that she is going to be a factor. She is not necessarily going to win seats uh, directly. I don't think that she is going to win any seats directly, but I think that she is going to be a factor. For instance, if you look at Makokova, she has worked there for a very long time. And the person who is contesting there on her behalf is her, her, her young sister, who has also been working with the people of Makokova. So I think that she is going to get a significant vote in Makokova. But, but a significant vote to make sure that the MTC alliance maybe does not win, but not necessarily to win the seat itself. Yeah, you know, Makokova is one area that I think is very tricky. We have uh, Togo's Uncle, we then have uh, the Rainbow Coalition with um, Ulthan, who was a candidate in that area. Then we have the alliance with a person who was who, who is a councillor, who was a councillor in that area. Then we had Uchinga, we have, you have Uchinga, who has been working in that community. So the vote is likely whoever wins Makokova might win with a small margin, but it might affect the opposition. Yeah, you see, you see the, the, the challenge is that Matson Slalo is taking from the MTC alliance vote. Uh, Tozan Kupe is taking from the MTC alliance vote and the alliance also is taking from its vote. And so you have all those three big political parties and big persons are uh, taking actually from the same vote, where ZANPF actually is uni united. But also there are a number of dynamics that you also need to look at in Makokova. For instance, you will discover that the person who is contesting for the alliance as an MP is not working well with the, with the people that are supposed to be his councillors. They are serious fights there. Secondly, you look at uh, what eight. What it is actually two alliance countries, is cancelled countries in Makokova. In Mago so all those things are going to be working against the alliance. So for me, if the alliance get the MTC alliance get that seat, 
they will get it by a very small margin. So then uh, looking at, uh, I mean, Gulawa as a whole, I mean, uh, there, there is um, a feeling, like I said, that there, there are some people who might actually, this time around, Zanlief might come and take uh, the, the candidates, like you have said. But let's go to Matabelele, for example. Uh, in 2013, uh, MGC lost Mat South and Mat North. Uh, do you think they are likely to gain those things? My, 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 my take is that we need to be able to then say what is it that the MTC Alliance has done that they did not do in, 20, in, 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 in 2013. In 2013, Morgan Zwangrai didn't go to Matabele South. But uh, there is someone who spent time in Mat South campaigning who people have forgotten about. A guy called Simon Kaimo. And that's exactly what he has been doing now. He has spent his whole time in Mad South working. So I don't expect a significant shift when it comes to Mad South. I don't expect a significant shift in the, in, in the Mad South vote. When you, when you then look at Mad North, my thinking is that the opposition is going to get one or two. And this is where I think actually, uh, in, in, for instance, in Kai, where Tohozan Cooper is really going to put up a show. I think that if she does not win, the Kai seat being held by Pepe, and, the, and if she does not take the guy's seat from Stems of Stems Union, then she is unlikely not to win anything in, in Matna. So you, you don't think the alliance would recover in Matsa or I, I, I think that they might recover, but the chances are very low. Yeah. The, the, all the pointers point to the direction, to the Zanupiev direction. So national, I mean, this election, I mean, the people have been talking about the contest being too close. Do you think we are going to have, have a hang parliament or Zan is going to maintain this uh, uh, majority parliament? Well, um, I think this is what we are all waiting for. I think this is what all, all of us will see. Um, it's a very close contest. It's a very close contest uh, from what people are saying. But um, I think that the, the, the demographics favor Zanbi. And again, if you, I, I hear the MTC Alliance arguing that because you have a lot of youth registering to vote, therefore, those are their votes. But the question is, what exactly is it that they've done to attract that vote? I don't think that they've done anything to attract that vote. I actually think that the youth vote is a youth is a vote that was mobilized by civil society. Specifically, civil society was saying to the youth, if you, have, you are not registered, you are not going to go to a Japrezer show. So for me, those are Japrezer votes. And unfortunately, we are not going to be able to, to, to have Japrezer to say to people, if you don't uh, vote, you are not going to, to, to go to Japrezer. Unfortunately, Chapresa is not on the ballot. Yeah, so we, we have also had uh, many people talking about rigging and, and all these kind of things. Do you think the rigging will be a factor in this election? My, my, my thinking is that the, one of the reasons why we have raised the rigging issue is, is because we have not understood where the ZANPF vote is coming from. So the default mode is to say that there is rigging. But uh, for, I, for one, scientifically has not been able to say how does ZANPF rig? And all along we were expecting that a person like Joyce Muchuru will be able to tell us how ZANPF rigs. She has not told us. We were expecting that a person like Jonathan Moy will tell us how ZANPF rigs. He has not told us. We were expecting that yesterday Robert Mugabe will be telling us how ZANPF rigs. And of all the people, Robert Mugabe gave a thumbs up, gave, gave a thumbs up to, to say. So my thinking is that while there is a likelihood that there is rigging, we are yet to understand how that rigging takes place. Yeah, lastly, the, the Mugabe effect. I mean, people are saying, you know, you're endorsing Chamisa is a boost to him, and other people are saying, you know what, by that endorsement, that will be the end of Chamisa. What is your reading of uh, the Mugabe statement, you know, saying I'm not going to vote for Zanu, and praising Chamisa, saying he's been doing well, and dismissing Kupe and, 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 and I think I, th I think for me, there are two fundamental questions. The first question is, who was Mugabe talking to? And the second question is, what is Mugabe's base? And all along we've been given the impression that Mugabe's base is Mashuna Land West, Mashuna Land Central, and Mashuna Land East. So one of the questions that we need to ask ourselves is, who was Mugabe talking to yesterday? So are the people in Mashuna Land East, Central, and West, do they have access to SAPC? And I think not. So I think Mugabe was basically talking to, to, to Chamisa's supporters. And unfortunately, the, the fundamental problem that is there is that Chamisa's supporters in the urban areas hate Mugabe. So for, for me, it's actually a disservice to have somebody like Mugabe, to have somebody like Mugabe endorsing you. But not only that, uh, when um, um, Donald Trump was, was doing his campaign, the Ku Klux Klan endorsed him. 
and all of us were asking and saying, why are they endorsing Donald Trump? What is in it for them? Because we know that they are selfish, they want something. And the same questions are being asked. We know that Mugabe always thinks about himself. So the fundamental question that Zimbabweans are asking themselves is, what is in it for Mugabe? You see, and it 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 close, it, 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 it brings a lot of chaos to the Chamisa issue. If I was Chamisa, because I don't think that Mugabe brings anything to Chamisa, I think that Mugabe is a burden. Uh, he will not add any value to, Ch to, to, to Chamisa. If I was Chamisa, I was going to stand up and say, please keep your vote. Thank you very much on that note. Maybe let's bring in a young voter and uh, we know we've been talking about the youths and the urban voter and all those kind of things. I mean, here is a young voter here. I mean, this morning when you left home, yeah. what was in your mind? Uh, well, I was really excited because this is actually my first time voting. So I, it was, I was just excited that I would be playing a part in deciding where the course of the country will go. Because I'd realized that for a long time, especially in urban areas, the youth don't really care much about what goes on in the political sphere. And, I, and for me, it came to the realization because we don't even vote. So if you're not voting and putting your trust into someone, when they let you down, you won't, you won't feel any way than when you're already invested in saying, okay, I think this candidate is the right person. If they do well or do good, you, you will feel a way about it. And that's how people get more engaged in making sure that the country is going the way the way we want it to go. So whoever wins, what do you expect from them? I expect them to just do the right thing. <laughs> that, that's all we want because right, I think everybody is fed up of how things are. Where we are right now, things cannot be the same. If, if, if things become the same, I think it will become a crazy situation for all of us. But I'm sure no matter how people want, are, are thinking they should vote for, everyone just wants change. Everybody yeah. just wants change. But do you think the, the, the young people are going to change? I know there are a lot of young people mm -hmm. uh, voted. Mm -hmm. And it was because for, maybe for you guys, you know, mm -hmm. you're doing music concerts and all, all that mm -hmm. kind of things, mm -hmm. encouraging young people to go and vote, I mean, to register. Mm -hmm. Now is voting time. Mm -hmm. Young people who have voted because of that excitement of shows, mm -hmm. to go, I mean, who registered because mm -hmm. of that excitement, to go and vote this time around. Uh, I think it's just mobilization. There was this campaign that I saw, I can't remember which, um, uh, 5 by 5 yeah, yeah. Yeah. for voting as well, because they would say, go with five, people, five of your friends to go and register. You could have done the same thing to say, go with five of your friends to vote, that type of thing. Because like, like someone else had mentioned that people were just registering because that's how you can get into a concert or get into something like that. I've realized also that many youths, especially in urban areas, do not have that May, may they have access to it, but I don't know why they are not going out and getting the education. For many people, just think politics is something that is far for the elderly or, or for the rural areas or something like that. We're in town trying to look for money. You see what I'm saying? So I th really think that a lot more programs need to be done, directed to the youth, to give them the education, to say, okay, this is what politics is. This is what voting means. This is what all these things that people words and terms that are thrown around that go over our heads so I especially for me because it's my first time voting so I think and, and I know that there are many people who are like me and thinking like me so all we need is the education some type of way that information can be given to us and not just a bribery type get into a concert but where from young people themselves so if, if political parties and, and all these people who are trying to spread awareness and voting awareness they need to identify young people that they can train to go and influence others in language that they can understand. Because there's no way someone who's 46 can convince a 16-year-old to vote. They will, mis they will misunderstand each other some way. But if a 16-year-old is telling a 14-year-old to vote, that's, that could make sense. Why is my voting must look cool. <laughs> voting must look cool. Changing the country must look cool. So I don't think we've done it yet. We got there with the whole uh, register, register. It was now trending. Everyone wanted to take a picture. I'm registered, I'm registered. But it mustn't stop there. Now they must know, okay, what does this mean that you are registered? What are you going to do next? Uh, so I guess that's all I can say. So I think since you're in a queue, we wish you luck. Thank you very much. Yeah. Say, I mean, you are here. Have you voted or you are yet to uh, say a vote? I'm also voting. This is my first time voting. Yeah. And, uh, I think on a different point of view, I think this exercise of voting took a very short time. So you've because already I, voted? No, I haven't oh. voted. I, I mean, uh, this biometric vote, yeah. this biometric vote is a new thing in our country. Yeah. I believe that in rural areas no one understands about biometric vote. While it took about more than three months or so to register, and it took about three days for 5.7 million people to register. I think to, to check whether your details are paying with your everything. So I think it's, it's a challenge. 
5.7 people in three days have to check it. I think I believe most of the people will find the, the, the difficulties of their details in the voters' vote. So you are, you are here to vote yourself. I'm here to vote myself, but I'm yeah. expecting a change. One or the other, the change is going to come. Okay. So, like, as, as, as a young person, I mean, whoever wins, what do you expect from them? Um, what we expect as young people, we expect change. We expect a positive change. Uh, I think he, not as whoever wins, we expect a winner that is going to bring a change. If we expect whoever wins, we are changing one way or the other to other people, that will benefit a quite number of people, but not everyone. But as young people, we expect uh, to, the winner to consider most everyone, every Zimbabwean, every part of Zimbabwe as a president. So when I was a young person, uh, here I brought my wife, but there are a lot of people I've encouraged them to vote at my church, at my place, and everywhere around my community. I'm telling people about how is it important to register. Because if you look at uh, the, the economy and the situation of the country this time around, it concerns much about, it, it, it kills much the young people. Because if the voting is the future, I'm voting for the sake of my son, who is young now. I will cast a, a vote that I believe that would benefit my son. But if we do things in a, in a way that we become more selfish, like I become more selfish and I don't vote for my son, I think the vote determines your future. Okay, thank you very much and wish you good luck. Thank you. Yeah, so we we were at the city hall here where I think uh, the queues are getting longer. I think uh, in the morning there were uh, well, quite a few people, but the queue is getting longer and longer. And like I said today, this is a very interesting election. A lot of things are at stake. Uh, some call it a watershed election. There are a lot of expectations that one can only hope that uh, everyone who is registered is going to cast their vote. And Abadjuela, uh, they will meet with I, Bazamine, So we'll be going around and uh, we'll be in touch with you when we get to another location and hopefully between now and and, 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 and 10 or 7 since I think I'm going to be 11 o'clock we'll be bringing you a press conference that is organized by uh, the Bulawayo situation room so they'll be telling us uh, they're monitoring the elections with uh, observers on the ground so at 11 o'clock we'll go to that press conference where they'll be telling us briefly what has happened what are the you know incidents if there are any how is the voting progressing so now we get it it's election day just like the side page or follow us on Twitter and also follow our streams because they'll be coming in here and there. For now, Natiti, Mele Linyuzo.